4,430 pounds. Little Springdale 2020 no slide carpetless couples camper here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. This is a pretty common little layout. We have these all over the place in our J Flight 212s and our Gray Wolf 20 RDSEs. There's a lot of brands that build something similar because it's, it's a good model. It's simple, it's no nonsense, it's lightweight, it's short in length, it's easy towing. It's a partridge in a pear tree. This layout has proven immensely popular uh, amongst folks who are both downsizing as well as getting their first RV. Um, like I said, it comes in a lot of forms. Most manufacturers build something like it. And it, it checks a lot of boxes, sometimes in just a little bit different ways. Like, you can see that we have a curtain to enclose the front bed area where I'm at right now. It's not a full privacy wall, but the bathroom in the middle, it's blocky enough that it gives it enough of a feel of a private bedroom then it kind of checks the box now um you've also got right next to the entry door the bathroom is straight across from it so this is a uh, very campsite friendly very traveling friendly quick in easy in easy out bathroom access sort of situation now back here it also checks off the need want desire for a large feeling living space due to the fact that we are just absolutely surrounded by these huge panoramic windows all of which open for airflow now a neat little thing that's easy to miss if you peek down here in the corner there are power outlets in the corners on both sides of that dinette you also have a very large true u dinette with full storage below so this can also uh, qualify and check the box of i need a good guest sleeping capacity because that can fit an adult so it doesn't just have to be grandkids. This thing can get the job done for you. Uh, we are carpetless. We are easy cleaning. We've got a full-size roof air, nice LED lights. These are great because they don't add a lot of extra heat to the RV, and they sip your battery instead of gulp it. This did not have a TV in it when it was brand new. Previous owners installed one, and I don't know if they tried a couple different locations or something until they finally found a wall stud. I'm not exactly sure why there's a couple screw patterns in the wall there, but the fact is it's got a TV installed. Maybe they just needed it in a different location. Now what's kind of neat is, if you wanted to, you could upgrade. You probably put a giant 40 inch TV against the wall over there. It would be crazy, but you could. And down below, we've got all of our normal TV hookups. We've got some USB chargers, household plugs. And those household plugs could very easily double as kitchen appliance outlets. Down below, we have a Bluetooth AM FM stereo. It's not DVD or CD, but it's very streaming media friendly. And you see how they actually have decent cabinet space down here, inclusive of a pair of plywood boxed full extension drawers also in the kitchen and this is one of the nicer things on this model is that high-rise sprayer faucet as well as a big farm sink and a big kitchen window they do a good job of that there if i back up and take a twist around we pass by the two-door six cubic foot gas electric fridge freezer and we've got ourselves a nearly floor to ceiling pantry the pantry doesn't go all the way to the floor because that's where our converter box is but frankly, I don't mind that because I don't really feel like getting on my hands and knees every time I want to get a box of rice a out for the afternoon. But, you know, that's just me. So, is it a truly private front bedroom? No. Is it close enough? I think so. I think so for most people. Now, it's an easy walk-around sort of bed situation. You've got nice, easy access headboard mounted outlets, which makes it supremely CPAP friendly. You've also got the uh, Ghost Rider laundry chute over here, which kind of just vanishes and you never see it again. And a pair of dual hanging closets. Simple, but effective. It gets the job done. Couple neat things here in the bathroom. The uh, previous owners upgraded to a larger Max Air vent fan, and they did put a fantastic fan vent cover above that, by the way. They put another one of those covers over the living room uh, vent, but they did not upgrade the fan there. They didn't put a fan there at all, actually. But, so we've got the skylight and the vent fan. They're kind of combined two into one here, but it works. And you've got a full shower surround panel going on, which some entry-level campers will lack. We still have a nicer foot flush stool versus a uh, centrifugal flush. And we do have a full medicine cabinet as opposed to just a mirror glued against the wall. Exterior looks pretty darn good too. I don't see anything here that concerns me. Uh, power awning, power tongue jack, makes setting and breaking camp pretty simple and easy. A lot of times on a more entry-level trailer, like the Summerland representing the, the basic trim package of the Springdale family, um, you won't always find things like propane tank covers, so it's nice that you see those here. Now, I'm trying to remember, for some reason in my head, 
I remember Summerlands having uh, plastic fender trim. Not that that enhances the RV. I think it's just it's just a cosmetic item. And I do, but I don't see it on either side of this. So, but it is. It's not like it was just removed. I mean, there is a thing there. So the best I can figure, I think the original factory trim was removed, and that little placeholder trim was put in place. And frankly, I think it looks fine. For some reason, that's just something that's jumping out in my head. I don't know, I have to look back at my old records and notes. So right above our sewer hookups here, we got a little outside shower station, convenient shower. A neat little preventative care item. We've got the little mud dauber screen over the furnace intake and exhaust. That helps prevent, uh, you know, flame out issues and whatnot from bugs getting in there and building a little nest in the summertime that, you know, then prevents the airflow from working properly in the winter. I noticed above the bathroom, there is a fantastic fan vent cover. Remember, it's not the full-on Fantastic fan in the bathroom, but it does have the, you know, Fantastic brand vent lid cover. There we go. Kind of a tricky thing to say because there's too many words that are too similar and mean similar things. It's one of the reasons people struggle with English, both those who uh, learn it as a second language as well as quite a few of us, myself included, naturally English speakers from time to time. Kind of like I just naturally... Oh, my God. Moving on. We are backup camera ready. That's what the little... Darth Vader thing is up here. That's just a prep housing for a Furion backup camera, and we have those available on the shelf if you like them. Once again, surrounded by windows on that rear wall. And notice that they're tinted, too. That's another thing that some entry-level campers will tend to leave out. There is a easily missed gas grill quick connect down here under that little corner, so if you do want to bring a grill outside to keep the cooking heat from getting into the camper, you can. Easy two-finger tilt power awning with LED lighting. And you can also see that the previous owners upgraded from just the conventional uh, entry door handle to the larger folding entry door handle. And we also have a pretty darn generous front pass-through compartment on here as well. I like how wide it is. A lot of people get really impressed. Like, tall storage is very impressive to look at. But wide storage is actually more functional when you're packing up or, or moving to a destination because you don't want to stack cargo on top of each other because it falls. You know, it'll shift. Sideways cargo might slide, but it ain't going to be in total disarray when you get there. So give us a call, guys. This one looks pretty good. This would be an absolutely awesome, either very first-time RV owner type camper, both due to the fact that it's small, easy to manage, it's simple, as well as the fact that it's a used price tag. So if you like camping and you want to upgrade something with a slide out next year, you're not going to take a big punch in the teeth on it or anything like that. And, uh, or if you're just getting out of the old family pop-up or whatever, you know, you get the idea. I'm sure what it, you can figure out if this works for you or not. You don't need me to tell you. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Forty-four hundred thirty pounds and ooh, look at that dog. Another thing you can do with this little screen over here is you can kind of pretend to have a little bit of a conversation with it. You can be like, so, Mr. Black Screen, uh, what do you think? Is this a nice camper? And it can be like, oh, yes it is. This is sure a nice one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs>